Hey guys, in this episode of John's Arcade, we're gonna go to Denver, Colorado and visit 1UP Lodo, that's lower downtown. That is an awesome freaking barcade in Denver, Colorado. Then we're gonna come back to the basement and do viewer mail and just chat. All right guys, let's get on with this episode. <laughs> Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. That's right guys, now listen, this is gonna be part number one of a many part series guys because we are going to Denver, Colorado. That is right, Denver, Colorado, because you see, I have a friend out there, my friend John Exidy. He's a great guy, he's actually, he's been collecting for a super long time. I mean, this guy is a grizzled, veteran he is a big time arcade collector and i've known him for a few years and him and him and i have talked on and off on the phone and on the internet he's helped me out a bunch down here he, i actually bought um his mad planet so the mad planets that's down here used to be his anyway he had he had the idea for me to come out to denver and check out the scene he thought that hey john you know i like your videos you really should come out here because we got a great scene and then john happens to work at one up which is an awesome barcade so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go to Denver, Colorado, hook up with John, and then go to 1UP and meet with Jordan, who is the owner of 1UP. And again, 1UP is a great arcade. The one we're going to today is 1UP in Lower Downtown, okay? And again, this is gonna be part of a multi-part series because John showed me all around Denver. We went everywhere, man. We, we, we went to 1UP, we went to 2UP, we went to a, a big retailer. Um, we went to Xyla's Hyperspace Arcade, but in this video right here, we're just gonna talk about 1UP. And then at the end, I'll show a little footage of the meetup that we had because 34K on Clove uh, kind of set up a local collector meeting the day that I was gonna be there. And then I also invited you guys to come down, uh, John's Arcade and Arcade Outsiders and VGO viewers and listeners. And a bunch of you guys showed up. I got to meet a bunch of, uh, of John's Arcade fans there. Some kids showed up. Pretty awesome. So I'll show some of that footage at the end. And we also did a ski ball tournament. It was a great time. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get in the car. Let's take a ride to the airport and let's go to Denver, Colorado and hook up with John Exidy from 1UP and take a tour, an all access tour of 1UP Lodo in Denver, Colorado. John. I've certainly dealt with him and talked with him much over the years, but this is the first time I'm meeting him. He's coming in a big pickup truck with a lift gate, he said. Is it this one right here? Is this it? I think it is. <laughs> hey everyone, it's John Exidy. What's up? Excited? Oh yeah, excited. Is this going to change your life? It is. <laughs> Put your bag right here. All right, thanks for coming to tell oh, nice uh, Pac-Man gloves. Thanks, dude. It's Nerd. The local guy that's making it. Is that right? Yeah. Rad. That's awesome. All right, let me get my shit in. Okay. We're in Colorado, by the way, and this is beautiful. Those are the Rockies, I take it? Right. And do you go out there? Once in a while. Yeah? Is that where you bury the bodies up in the hills? Well, yeah. <laughs> right over the there? southern part over here. <laughs> All right, John, so what are we doing here? So I just arrived. I know we're going to 1UP. What, what, what are we doing today? So the plan is we're gonna go to 1UP. I'm gonna introduce you to everybody there. Okay. Uh, go to lunch. All right, so we're driving. 
driving, we're almost at the one up, right? So what is your role at the one up, John? Who are you? Uh, what do they call you? Do you have a title? <laughs> I always make the joke that um, <laughs> I just, you know, clear coin jams. That's, you what, cl- that's what you do? <laughs> no, basically, um, I'm the technician. Yeah. And then we have a little shop upstairs where we sell games, and I'm kind of the owner of that part. Okay. And then I also supply and buy the games for the one up. Gotcha. So you're basically the you make the arcade happen. Right. The game fixing, restoring, whatever you know, finding the games, repairing the games. That's correct. Etc. And then we have another guy. His name is Dan Gutches. Yep. He's uh, a pinball guy. There he supplies pinballs. And he also um, services all our pinball machines. Okay. I Do the pins break down a lot? They break down a lot. He's there more five, than vids. Yeah. Really? He's there five days a week fixing stuff. No kidding. Yep. When I was at Pinball Wizard in New Hampshire, because they they have a lot of pins, like a hundred and some pins. Yeah. And I I was really surprised that you know the vids don't really break down. They said it's just they're constantly messing around with the pins. Yeah. So here's the thing with vids. Um, I have a little saying actually, that uh, whenever we get a game. Um, for the first two weeks, whatever's wrong with it or whatever's weak... It will happen. will happen. Right. right. So once you hammer out all that stuff, your game's pretty solid for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean I've mean, i experienced that myself in the basement. You know, you bring, a, you bring an unknown game down, within a week something breaks, power supply goes, monitor goes, flyback goes, whatever. Right. You fix that and then you're good for a couple years. Sure, but keep in mind that these machines are on like 18 hours. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a big, big difference. difference. Yeah. Right. So you have to kind of like bulletproof a lot of things and you know, uh, stuff that you even thought was going to be fine just isn't. Right. So uh, there's a lot of work to be done, but I figured out a pattern how to get things going and how to like lock them in. The biggest issue right now that we have are coin mechs and people spilling drinks on the buttons and joysticks. Uh, all sticky? All sticky, yep. Yeah. That's like the most common thing. So you have to take the buttons all apart and clean them? Yep. That's probably like an every... Every time I come in, I have to do that. Really? Yeah. I had one game recently, Qbert. Somebody spilled a whole drink on it and went inside the machine and it fell on top of the uh, transformer. Uh, and it shorted out the two lights, you know, um, on the coin door. Yeah. And... The fuse that's down there got really, really sticky. So when I removed it and cleaned it and put it back, the power supply actually blew. Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> Is that an original power supply? No, I put it in a switcher. Okay. The actual switcher exploded. Oh, it did? The it's, switchy one? <laughs> it sounded like a gunshot right by my ear. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So, and then of course, John's got a big private collection. And you know, I- I've known you for a while, John. We've We've talked on the internet, on the phone, for a few years. Yeah, that's right. I bought my Mad Plans from you. Your best game, pretty much. Uh, you helped me get my Zookeeper going when I got it. I you, did? S- you sent me all that RAM. Oh, yeah. Remember that? No, not really, but it sounds like it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you sent me all the 4116s and then uh, the RAMs in the top left corner of the board. 2114s. What? The 2114s. Is that, what do you mean? Is that? Those, those are the other RAMs. Yeah, the other RAMs, the one in the top left. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So. It's good, good to be with you, John. <laughs> so this is Coors Field? Yes, it is. And who plays here? The Rockies? Is that what it says? Anything I watch sports, dude. Is this, is this a base? Uh, honestly, I don't even it's know. It's baseball. This is yeah. baseball? Yeah. It's the Colorado Rockies. Yes, it is. You don't, you've never been to a game? I went to the to a game for the first time in my life uh, two months ago. Is that right? Yeah. Was it, was it good? I didn't watch the game. I was just talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> So are we coming downtown here? So right here yeah. is Blake Street, and one up is right down the street here. Okay. Oh, you're right by the stadium. We're actually the first bar. Yep. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. So that's a great spot. It's excellent. Location. It's like Wrigleyville in Chicago, man. Come out of the ball game and pop into your bar. It's yeah. You, wait till you see it. It's it's a great location. Awesome. All right, well, let's keep going. All right, John. So we're here. This is it. You have a coin door, by the way. What's what's that too? Uh, I'm gonna use the parts to fix a Pac-Man in. A Pac-Man? Yeah. So there's a bunch of bars right here, right? Yeah. It's, this is this is all bars. Right. Haters, sports column, refinery. So this is a big destination in the street, right? Right. And here's the uh, one-up sign. Down here is actual one-up. The, the, okay, so the place is down here? Yeah. Cool. There's a giant gym right there. Giant Jenga? Yeah. Do you guys play that? <laughs> All the time. That's my favorite. Oh, that's funny. 
Dude, the weather is so awesome right now. It was like zero degrees when I left. He's carrying my suitcase. <laughs> so is, is there uh, usually lines to get in here? Uh, the lines over there, you just, they check IDs before they let them through here. And there's no cover? No cover. Ever? Ever. The, the two-up's a little bit different because we have, it's a venue as well. So yeah. We have shows and stuff like that. So oh, nice. It's a little bit different. I'll take it down a little Alright, John, this is it. This is the one up. Here's the bathroom, dude. <laughs> I like the. That actually looks just like from the side art. Is that a sticker? Yeah, it's pretty much blew up some kind of side art. But that's like the Namco pack, man. Right. Not the Midway one. What? You don't like the nose on that? <laughs> no, I do. Yeah. I think I think the Midway Puck Man's cooler than Namco, yeah, right? Cool. <laughs> All right. So check this out, man. You guys got a shitload of pins. And by the way, is Jordan around? Because Jordan's the owner. You're just a scrub, right? Right. Right. All right. Let's let's say hi to Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Yep. What's up, man? How are you? I'm John. Welcome. Guys, this is Jordan. This is your place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my day's off. On your day's off. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got one up here. This yeah. is the Lodo, Lower it's Downtown. The okay, and then you have another one. The one on Colfax. Which we might visit too, right? Absolutely. Okay. So can you like show us around? Definitely. It'd be my Cause, pleasure. Because I've heard tons about this place, right? Because, I mean, the Kong office has been here a couple Absolutely. times, right? And Jordan actually owned Twin Galaxies for a short while. I don't know if you want to get into that, but... the Adler years. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could talk about that later, but... <laughs> In the meantime, why, why don't you show us around, dude? So I noticed right away you got a ton of pins. Absolutely. I mean, tons of... A lot of Stern stuff. And then some older stuff, too. Some Bally Williams. I mean, yeah. we've got a healthy mix of everything, you know, a lot of the classics, a lot of the A-list pins, and then everything is just in tip-top shape. I think definitely with the East Coast having the arcade scene and the Midwest here having quite the bit of pinball saturation, everything is in uh, tournament tournament shape. Wow. So, And so you've got Stearns, you've got Williams, like... What's the big earner? Is it the new stuff, the old stuff? Man, the old stuff will give the new stuff a run for its money. It's it's a, it's all across the board. Definitely right now, the Joaquin Dead, it's definitely like... Is it's, that like it's, number one? It's it's crushing as like the new pin on the scene, but you can't ever, you can't ever count out an Adam's Family, and right. Evil Madness. They're always at, you know, top Yeah, because I went to a, uh, a big arcade up in New Hampshire like a couple weeks ago, yep. and they had like 110 pins. Sure. They had the whole gamut. Uh, Bally Williams, Stern, like everything. Yep. And they said Adam's Family was the number one pin in the it whole crushes. place. It crushes, and it's a fast, fast earner. You're right. talking, talking no, uh, no save balls. It's a quick game. And you've got the color DMD in it. Yep, absolutely. Color DMD. Everything here. And, and you got the color DMD in Lord of the Rings. Color, color DMD, Lord of the Sorry. Rings. Color DMD, Med Medieval Madness. Color DMD, Doctor Who. Basically, if there's a, if there's a solid enough mod out there yeah. that's not going to interfere with gameplay, we've got we've got it. Sweet. So let's let's kind of go through the line. Sure, absolutely. X, are you going to join us? Sure. <laughs> now, John, you don't work on the pins? No, I don't. You don't? No, Dan got All right, so Metallica. Coming in, Metallica I, LE. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, I, I like the game. Do you a, like it? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. My friend had one, and we did an unboxing, and I, I thought it was kind of cool. It was, it's a, I think, like, the, the entire makeup of the game is amazing. Artistically, it's beautiful. Um, I, I, the, my only critique, though, would be like soundtrack wise. I feel like ACDC crushes Metallica Seriously? from a musical. No, well, not those the, songs are so not iconic. The, no, no, not the music, I yeah, yeah. Just the way the music is inter integrated into the game and how they play. Like, you oh, know, the ACDC, the yeah, selection, it's part of the, the game. Jukebox, it's yeah. part of the game. Where, like, you're picking a mode, per, you're picking a, a song per ball on Metallica, where, like, right, you right. play through them on. On ACDC, so I think that one translates a, a bit better. So you got a Creech, Creature, Color TMD, limited, limited uh, LED on the play field to prevent ghosting, and it's uh, now. Does this there. get a lot of play? Creature does well. Yeah, Creature does well. You know, we we take a lot of pride in, in the way everything uh, not only plays but also earns, and and nothing's here to be a dud. You know, right, right. We don't have the score footage for something to be a dud. And South Park now. Was South Park in, in Colorado? South Park is in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a Colorado thing, right? It is. And it, it, you know, We're in Colorado, a park. Uh, South, South Park. So it's going to be due west of Denver, probably about an hour and a half. Is that a real town? Absolutely. It's called South, South Park. Park. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
Yes, do us to Denver. <laughs> South Park, you know, you can, you're you looking at what, like a $2,500 pin? 2500 three grand. Yeah. And this thing crushes in the earning category. And maybe it is a Colorado thing. Maybe it's just like a trendy, trendy. Well, great, everybody great loves theme. South Park, yeah. But uh, as far as, I mean, I mean, it crushes. When like the locals come here, they don't know pins. Right. But they know South Park, right? right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and this is the Stern Indiana Stern Jones. Stern Indiana Jones, which, possibly one of the best multi balls uh, in pinball, period. Yeah. Is yeah. it with the arc? Or is, uh, it's the uh, Temple of Doom multi ball where it, all of them come out of the temple and like all the balls fall in the okay. play field. It's pretty awesome. All right, so, John, I, I know you've got opinions on pinball machines. Yeah. This one or the Williams? Which is the better Indiana Jones? Well, here's the thing. That's my favorite like, like movie ever, too, by the way. Yeah, so <laughs> from a collector's sp- standpoint, the Williams one's awesome, right? Yeah. But on location, because of the multi-ball, this is the one to have on location. Is that right? Oh, yeah, it has like eight balls at one time. Because I have a friend that has this game. He loves it. Yeah. He's like, he's like, it doesn't get a fair shake. Is that true, you think? Yeah, this thing's a big huh? it, It's a bigger. Yeah? Yeah. And the thing is, again, the, the college kids are, they don't know that there's a Williams one, right? right? <laughs> no, college kids definitely don't know there's a Williams one. But right. yeah, the game, the game is yeah. amazing. All right, here's ACDC. That is a good game. Oh, it's a player, Great man. Steve Ritchie game. Yeah. So we've That's got a the, solid pin. Yeah, we've got the LE on both locations. No, we got the premium on both locations. So, yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. All right, so this is Iron Man. They're, like, rebooting this, right? This is the re-release. This is the re-release? The, it just came out, Iron like, in the last well, it's year? it's the same play field, but it's a new cabinet. Oh. Okay. They changed the uh, the shroud around the uh, DMD? Yeah. Look, is that different? Yeah, the, 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 the head and the shroud are different. Okay. Oh, the head's different no, no, too. No, the head is the, the, just the. I think the the T molding color is different on the head, and the shroud around the DMD, like you said, is different. So that's and then otherwise the play field and playability is the same. Yeah, it's basically the new design versus the old design. Yeah. Gotcha. And then Tron Legacy. I'm so torn about this game. Oh man, playability. I think as far as um, the ball on the play field with integrated sounds, I think it's one of the coolest games. I think the sound in it is. Un- oh yeah. Yeah, so from that, and then this one's got an alternative back glass, or that one. Oh, that, the, that was the second that release, the second right, release. with the girls yeah. on it? So this it's, original, it's original not, release, second back glass. It's not the lenticular, yeah. which the first version had. Yep. I mean, to me, this is one of the best licenses that Stern ever did. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. Also, man, this game has really good flow. Like everything, yep. It's a yeah. super fast game. Everything flows really well. The design of the actual game is excellent. It's awesome. All right, and then Walking Dead, this is their new pin. Yep. And... Uh, Personally, I don't know much about the show. Is I'm it, with you. Is this good? I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not into zombies. Yeah, me neither. So, but I mean, it's it has it, in the past month that it's been out, it's crushed earnings. So, Are you serious? Yeah, it's been at the top of the total pole. So what is this? Pin pin seven lucky is that normal on there? Um, I what think our, our, our operator didn't our operator didn't like the AMC logo. He found it too distracting in the middle of the game because it's bright white in the back of the head. Oh really? The back of the back glass, so he covered it up. Sure. Yeah. Wait, they used to have the AMC logo. The AMC logo is behind the pen pen seven, so you'll what? see that. At the <laughs> yeah, that's the case. So they come with the AMC logo back behind that. Oh really? Yeah. So that pen pen seven. What does that mean? What is that? It's probably some local thing here, yeah. huh? I'm not sure. That's funny. <laughs> so that's the standard edition, right? The, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's all the, the pro. The I, yeah, they're they shipped. Yeah. I just saw one. I, I saw an LE when I was in uh, New Hampshire. You got in the game exchange. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Doctor Who with the yeah, color DMD. DMD. Yep. Pretty straightforward. Again, a classic. Good earner. Not much to say about it. Yeah, good, good TV theme. We just thought they did a Doctor Who panel at Denver Comic Con last year. Oh, they did. Yeah. So which Doctor Who is that? It doesn't like Doctor Who change like all the time, like in the show. I, well, it's yeah. seven different versions. You see at, at the bottom of that, there's seven different Doctor Who's on this. Oh, oh, I see what's going on. So in the back glass, those are all the different Doctor Who's right. over time. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so my comment was actually relevant. <laughs> All right, so Star Trek. This is actually a pretty good game. I, I played that. Yeah, yeah, again, the flow good. on that's awesome too. Yeah, but is it as good as the as the Steve Ritchie Williams one? I think it's yeah. better actually. You do? Yeah, I think that the gameplay is amazing. Everything that they did on this, I think it's an improvement from the other one. Really? Yeah. I actually own this one, and I don't own the other one anymore. Is that right? Yeah. What do you think, Jordan? You know. <laughs> It's a it's a very it's a very fast play field. The flow is really good, but I mean you're talking about a classic, a pinball yeah, yeah, stable yeah. and next gen. So. Right. And then onto onto the Adams family. I mean, come on. I mean yeah. this this is. 
can't, this, uh, you can't beat it. It's a classic. It has to be in every lineup, every collection. There's just no way to have a have a pin. Yeah, I need an it. Adams Family. I should get rid of Whirlwind and get this. What do you think? Oh man, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I had my choice between a Shack Attack and an Adams Family, <laughs> I don't know. It'd be a tough choice. It'd be a tough choice. And then Lord of the Rings, that's one of the better Sterns. Absolutely. Again, a super strong earner. Did you put all these figures in here? No, I think the figures are stock. Are they really? Yeah. It had all those in the beginning? Especially here at the, the, the downtown location and dance collection. Everything's a bit more traditional. Okay. So I would say everything in there is stock. Actually, they did come stock. Later on, they ended up doing uh, an LE version of this game. And they had run out of the plastic, the, the the toys on there, so they ended up doing a version with no toys. But that's just the LE version. Okay, because because my friend had one. I don't remember the toys. He must have had an LE. Okay, I don't know. All right, so Wizard of Oz, Jersey Jack, yep, LCD display. I mean, how's, how's it doing? It's it's one of the top two pins on location. So there's, is it really? There's, there's no to know. I mean. I think a lot of it is just you walk up to it, you want to play it, you want to see what it's about. It's so different than all the others. It looks so and, modern. Man, it's very modern. It takes a little bit of getting used to. There's a lot going on. So, Are you guys going to get The Hobbit? John's online. I already Hobbit. know this answer, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to bring it here or your house? I got to think about it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Medieval Madness. I, I happen. I know it's cliche to say, but I happen to love this game. Absolutely, the game's amazing. I, I think it's amazing too, and uh, I just hate the price though. <laughs> it's so overpriced. Yeah, they're they're all over the board. But I are mean, you getting a remake? Uh, so I have money down. We both have money down on a remake. Yeah. Whether whether I pull the trigger on mine or not, it's a yeah. whole different question. Yeah, because there's a company in Chicago that's that's doing a reproduction of it. Finally. Because that, that, that guy in Australia was trying to do it for the longest time, right? It's going to be Stern. Stern. Stern picked Stern's it up. building yeah, it. So Stern, yeah. Stern, but Stern isn't it through like Illinois Pinball or something? Or All I know is I was contacted by Stern that we're getting ours through Stern. So. Really? Yeah. Interesting. All right, what's going on with the back glass, guys? What is this? You know, whatever, whatever you can do to draw someone in to drop a quarter, I guess. Hey, man. I don't remember that back glass. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the getaway here with these chicks. <laughs> What's going on here? I mean, it's an alternate back. You've never seen that? We got that. <laughs> we, have some, we have some pretty extreme ones with the two of them. Yeah. you see that? Yeah, like the Raven one and all that. <laughs> <laughs> we have Guns N' Roses with a pretty explicit back glass over there. Yeah. Oh, really? I thought that was a uh, NOS uh, find from Anthony at Quarter Arcade. We <laughs> yeah, didn't get right. that <laughs> That's an eBay special right there. <laughs> All right, and then Tales from the Crypt, Day to East. Absolutely. That's a decent game. Yeah, you got to have one Day to East in the collection for sure. That's right. It's Mix it up a little bit. It's the best Day to East, too. Yeah. You think it's the best one? One of the best, yeah. Yeah. N name one that's better than this one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars? Guns and Roses, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Guns, Guns and Roses. Maybe. Yeah, yeah Guns and Roses. Yeah. Yeah. People, some people don't like the wide body aspect of that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. All right, so you got Ski Ball here, which I actually think is cool. Ski We're gonna do a ski ball tournament tomorrow, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you can't knock ski ball. I think it's just fun. I mean, from an operator standpoint, I mean, there's no faster way to get a. I mean, the, the, right. Nine balls for a quarter. And, and, and you the see thing how is, you bring your goes. girlfriend here, and have Absolutely. a beer, and you play. And it's interactive. You put three next to one another. Three people can play at a time. Yeah. That also, you know, translates to the four-player Pac-Man. The exactly. more people you can get involved and engaged at the same time, doing the same thing, the more successful it is. All right. So you just mentioned. The four player Pac Man, you've got two of them. Yeah. Is there a reason why you have two? It's so popular, we have to have two. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. It's so popular? So popular. Come on. To it, it, you know? Because I, I've seen this game on location at, 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 at big arcades, and I've never seen anyone play it. Oh my gosh. You, but here? You can't get on one at night here. Really? Yeah, that's why we had to get two. Game's kind of slow and boring. Oh my gosh, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, from a playability standpoint, I mean, it's five screens, it's the same thing over and over again. I mean, we, we, I played it with like Don Hayes and those guys, yeah. and, and, and we all kind of wanted to walk away after oh, absolutely. like two minutes. <laughs> I'll watch you go play this and I have to have the live stream. Yeah. yeah. That's funny, so you've got two of them. That's pretty cool. So that's a, that's a newer Namco game. It is kind of cool, though. It is cool. I mean, I mean, John, would you put one of these in your basement? I wouldn't. No. You wouldn't? No, no. no I would if I had the room. Big footprint. I think it's a big footprint. 
Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a big footprint, but on top of that, you know, there's like, there's no depth to it. There's only so many levels you play and then it's over. Yeah, it, it seemed like really like there wasn't much going on. Like once you played the first yeah, then that's that's one it. minute, it was like that's the game it. never changed. But for the bar goer, the people out on the town, right, like, right. The, you know, it's perfect. The casual, I love it. Absolutely. For the casual gamer, it's yeah, yeah. perfect. And then Time Cut Crisis 3, that's a great shooting game. Absolutely. That, that probably gets a lot of play, right? It gets a ton of play. You know, again, two-player, it's interactive. You can pony up with your buddy, drop 10 bucks into it, and uh, have a good time. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great run. I dig it. Yeah. And then over there was a Buck Hunter, right? Yeah. It's, uh, people play that? Yeah, people, people play it. You know, the funny thing about the one-off is everything's a quarter. So there's yeah. not another Buck Hunter. Even the pinballs? You, no, the pinballs are 50 cents. Okay. All, all arcade games are a quarter. So there's not another Buck Hunter in Denver set to 25 cents a trek. So right? as a joke, I put it in here at 25 cents a trek, and again, it just crushes. So It's fun, though. I, it's fun. I like the gun games. The, the, the only yeah. thing about it is you're guaranteed that five minutes on your trek for that quarter, so that's the only like drawback from like an operator standpoint. Right, right. Uh, oh, they, so for a quarter, they can play for five minutes? Yeah, you get that trek, and you can't short. So that's why when you come up to like Terminator Salvation, so... I finished this game. It's, that's a lot of quarters, depending on how it's Well, set. my buddy ha owned the arcade, so... There you go. <laughs> he just so, coined it up until we finished yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> so the, again, so Terminator Salvation. I didn't want to believe, like, you read that Playmeter, like, Playmeter magazine, yeah. and you look at, like, the earnings and what the top games are, and, you know, I didn't believe that, like, this thing does what it does. And it does? It rushes. I've never it's seen a it. cool game. I've never dude. seen a game earn, earn, back its, uh, earn back that fast. Is that's, that right? It's unbelievable. You bought this brand new. I'll never tell. You'll never tell? <laughs> <laughs> never and by the way, all your games are in really good condition. It, it shows. Exidy does. Exidy's doing a good job here. John, you have a lot of conversions here and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Jamma switchers. We have all these play two different This used games. to be a Simpsons? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a Simpsons cabinet? No, definitely not. <laughs> all right, House of Dead 2, a great Sega shooter. John, do you like this game? Love this game, actually. You do? I like this for the Dreamcast. Yeah. I like it for the arcade. I like the, the game. It's just too. awesome. Yeah. The game itself is really fun. It is. And the whole package. Look at that. All the art yeah, on I it. Know. It's the great. side art. Everything. The game's beautiful. Yeah, I played this when I was in Puerto Rico, and the game's hard, man. It really is hard, yeah. But you know what's cool about it? There's a lot of secrets and a lot of Easter eggs and stuff like that. Oh, there are? So, yeah, so it makes the games really fun. That monitor looks perfect, by the way. It does. It does. It looks <laughs> <Yeah>. flawless. <laughs> All right, so Mortal Kombat. Now, Jordan, you were telling me before you're a big fighting guy. Huge Mortal Kombat fan, and yeah, I feel like no arcade's complete without the collection. So, so do you like Street Fighter? I, uh, you know, I appreciate Street Fighter. Do you have Street Fighter here? Oh, yeah, there's, we've got one in the back. Okay. I just, uh, it was never my thing. It never clicked for me, and this was this was the one that got me. So, really? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, cause I, in my basement, I have a Street Fighter Hyper Fighting 2 yep, champion, absolutely. whatever. And I've been thinking about swapping it out for a Mortal Kombat. Should I do it? I mean, the play. Would you do it? If you're a Street Fighter guy and you're. Well, used I don't know to, what I am. Well, if you're used <laughs> to the way a Street Fighter plays and how realistic it is and yeah. the timing and and the everything that went into programming it, then you're true and true to, to Street Fighter. But you know. But the thing is, when I was a kid, I played Mortal Kombat and the Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, then get that. Your, that's why I remember. Get yourself one. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't not, play Street Fighter. Not an expensive pickup and an yeah. good add to the collection. And I think the cabinet and the artwork is cool. All of them. Which yeah. is the best one? One, two, or three? Uh, that's it's totally it's totally different. As from a head-to-head -head combat standpoint, there's no better game to step up to than two. If you want to play against a computer and like really gauge yourself and figure something out, you can play one because it's the only one with a scoring system where you can actually shoot for a perfect game. Oh really? And then three adds in the combo system. So I would say three and one if you're playing solo, and then head to head, there's no better matchup than two. And which one has the best artwork? Um, two's pretty cool, right? I think right? Two, is, two, is, two is it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because it got a little cartoony with uh, with three. Yeah. Two, it was still a little raw, although it was a big switch when it went from one to two, you know? Right. I love this uh, Mortal Kombat 2 Collector's Edition com yeah, you comic can, book. Well, you can get the comic book, I think, on, on one, two, and then... Oh, really? Or maybe it's just two, the compact disc and the comic Dude, book. Dude, that's so cool. They're yeah. advertising a comic book on there? Oh, yeah. On the screen? So, all right, six-player X-Men. My, my buddy Adam has one of these. Ours it, isn't as cool this, as Clay Cowgill's, but it definitely... It's, what does that mean? Oh, Clay... What it, Clay? John will tell you a bit more about how Clay basically re-engineered the six-man X-Men. Yeah, what he ended up doing with it is the original now, one... Clay Cowgill did, did like a bunch of multi-boards, right? For, right. He's like right. an engineer, right? That's exactly and what he is, yeah. Owner of ground control. Right, right. So what he did with his is 
He's, the original ones have two monitors in them. He has one big widescreen monitor inside. What? Yeah, but it's LCD? running. Uh, yeah, but it's running off of MAME, I think, or a, or a computer or something like that. But his looks amazing. You it know? does. Yeah, and he also, the depth, because it has two monitors, it's super deep, right? He was able to cut his and bring it up front so it's nice and thin oh, versus... Look at this thing. There's oh, a, really? There's a soffit in the wall, right? So there's a one monitor shooting up that's uh, in one's one in position. Bottom, yeah. One's in the bottom in one position. Then there's a, an additional monitor box which goes out the back of this right. game for the other 25 to sit in there. So you've got the two monitors plus the, you know, plus the deck for the control panel. And the footprint of this game is massive. It's totally massive. Yeah. I mean, I, I dug one of these out of a warehouse with my buddy. Yeah. I mean, you could live inside the control panel. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. When, when John's fixing it, he's inside the machine. I know. You, yeah. can, you can get inside there and hide. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it, it, it's awesome. But because again, there's nothing in there. Really? Yeah. No, it's just an empty box. Basically. Yeah. All right, so now we got all your classics, yep. right? And so I had to ask you a question. So. I don't know what the demographic is. It mostly twenty somethings, thirty somethings. It's all across the board. I mean, you, you know, as we're walking here through here during happy hour during yeah. the afternoon, you're going to see a lot of older, older, older people, yeah. gamers, a bit more of a serious clientele that really wants the game. Yeah. Same thing with pinball. And then we get to that like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and it turns into a shit show in here. And it it's does. a lot of fun. I mean, like. <laughs> right, right. You know, more of a younger crowd. Like oh, it's 20s, kind of cool. 30s. I'll never forget. Like our first year when we open, this guy walks in, his mouth goes open, he's like, "Oh my God, the game collection!" And then the next words out of his mouth, "And there's girls here." <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, awesome. it's really cool. It's really so, cool. my question is this, though. So, you got these guys who are in their 20s. Yep. Do they want to play X-Men and Pinball and Mortal Kombat, or do they gravitate towards... Miss Pac-Man, Centipede, Galaga. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go down to earnings, like, first off, it's multiplayer. When you're coming out to a bar, especially in the nighttime hours, yeah, it's not about diving into a game like a two-hour game of Pac-Man. Right. It, you know, it's it's about it's about you know multiplayer. Being right. The social with your aspect. The social aspect yeah. of it. So you can definitely see that in earnings, but you know the classics they get played, and then everything's here for a reason, obviously. Right. Right. So. All right. So let's go down the line. So you have an Atari Centipede, yep. which you got to have. I mean, th these are all the staples. Can't and that's not, what, and that's not have a pete. You gotta have all the staples, yeah. and you have them all here. They all look really good. Pac-Man's got some handwear, but that's normal. <laughs> this Pac-Man, and they're all running uh, CRTs, obviously. Is there a mirror back there? What's going on there? What's up with that? So people can check themselves out when they're playing. Tell me that's not awesome. Wait, wait. <laughs> really cool depth. All right, hang on, hang on. Let me turn the light off. Uh -oh. All right, so you guys have a mirror. You installed that? Yes, I did. Yeah, I thought it would. I thought it would look cool. It actually does look kind of really cool. cool. <laughs> like, I watch the games from like a, like when you're standing back, you're like, oh my god, look at the depth on that game. Like it's it's pretty cool. It's actually a neat effect, John. Yeah, I, this was your idea. Yeah, I saw this once back in the '80s in an arcade. It always stuck in my head, so really? I thought it'd be a good idea to throw that idea in, into and, our and if, if someone's over here watching, you kind of can watch up there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's upside down, but a uh, joust. Gotta have joust. Joust, 19 and 1 horizontal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's kidding, guys. <laughs> Robotron with the J-Rock in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it? No, it's not. <laughs> No, again, everything here is, you know. Except for, except for the except, 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 except for the Encom Tron Marquee. Yeah. Which, by the way, didn't turn out that great. It's a little faded, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's still a little, looks, it's it doesn't faded. pop. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I mean, we were trying to try try something new with it. I think it looks all right. It looks good. Yeah, it looks I good. I think the one that we had in there was a little bit lifted, the original marquee. Right. So yep. I think we went with this because of that. Yeah, because this old game, they, they did like a NCOM branded Tron package, yep. like the coin door stuff. Because in the movie, the, the company was NCOM, not Midway. Right. And then, okay, Atari Millipede for non-original trackball. How do you like that? Cool, right? <laughs> Lit, up. Lit up. Lit up. Just like Barely. Back in the day. <laughs> tapper, you gotta have tapper. You have a few tappers, I heard. We got a, we got a couple tappers. We got, we've got 11 tappers. Ele 11 tappers. 11 tappers. Yeah, Jordan has 11 tappers upstairs. <laughs> Frogger. John was telling me earlier. This is our best earner. Best, right best classic earner in the entire collection. I, I believe that. Classic upright. Classic upright. I, I totally believe that. So Frogger is the number one. Classic earner. Here's the thing, uh, you guys know Fun Spot, ACAM. They would exhibit at PAX East. They would bring some of the arcade down there. And me and my buddies were, because we would volunteer there, and we were paying attention to what games got played the most. 
and that was number yeah. one. Wow, a room full of games. And the thing is, every girl that walked in went right to Frogger. Every single freaking time. We could like set a clock to it. We're like, here comes a girl, right to Frogger. Yeah, that's interesting. There's something about it. Yeah, that's how it gets what? played. That's how it gets played at night. So you get the girlfriend and the boyfriend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, Simpsons. Now, I've been hearing so much about Simpsons lately. Simpsons and Turtles, Simpsons and Turtles. Simpsons and Turtles, Simpsons and Turtles. Yeah. I mean, you have to have the, you have to have the four players. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you'll find it uh, at Colfax. It's Simpsons, Simpsons X-Men at Colfax. So yeah. We'll see that later. And then NBA Jam. I actually like NBA Jam. Yeah, NBA Jam in town it gets a lot, a lot of traction. Does it? We've, pro we've got the two top, uh, uh, for the Twin Galaxies' biggest blowout, we've got the two top players in town. So Is that right? That's, it. that's our claim to fame. It's not much for Colorado, but... And we've got Jeff Pickles on Pac-Man. So. And then here's your Turtles. Turtles. And that gets a ton of play? A ton of play. You ton have Turtles play. in time? You don't have Turtles in time. No. Uh, I think we kind of didn't want it either, did yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, stuck with Turtles. Yeah. The original one. All right, so Punch Out, one of my favorites. The people like the Nintendo stuff? They like the Nintendo stuff. Yeah, we were able to slide, slide this one by with a, with a play choice on the inside, so it's, uh, it works well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Qbert, everyone obviously knows. Absolutely. So this one's a uh, faster, harder. So oh, it is? Yeah. I actually, uh, that's my favorite version. Yeah. yeah. That's what's in here. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's a lot funner and it just looks. Okay, so it's the FHMC Qbert. Because I had the multi board and I yeah. pulled it off. If I wanted to put that in there, is it just a, is it just a ROM swap? That's all it is. It's a ROM yeah. swap, yeah. Just a couple ROMs? See? Uh, it's a lot of ROMs. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's something like 12 ROMs or something. Okay. Like Maybe more than that. And you put the mirror back there, too. Yeah, that's look at you. I had, I had a little extra piece. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Double Dragon. Dedicated Double Dragon. Dedicated Double Dragon. I don't have anything snappy to say about that one. Oh, yeah. it's Double it's Dragon. It is, yeah. Man. Well, John, you were telling me earlier this was your first game. Not this one. Yeah, But yeah. it was a conversion. It's the very first game I ever bought for my collection, actually. Yeah. Double Dragon. It was a huge game for me when I was in high school. Me too, dude. On the NES. Well, I mean, I would just play this forever. You know, you know, and now I, and then I got the board and yeah. I play it. I'm like, this game sucks. It does. <laughs> it, dude, it does. It's sluggish and just yeah. lame. But it you drags. know what, man? When I first got this, I mean, when I first started playing this, my friends used to just beat each other up. Instead of playing the actual game, we would just punch right, each right. other in the face, and that was it. <laughs> right, now play co-op. Right. Yeah. I, I love Kung Fu Master, personally. Yeah, not. That's awesome. Yeah. And I used to love the NES version of that. Yeah, the game's awesome. Yeah. When I had a Play Choice 10, all I played was this. That was like the whole thing to me, was, it. was Kung Fu Master. Yep, yep. But this is the arcade version, which is way more elite than the NES. It's super tough, man. It's I mean, it's a really hard game oh, I've to never, play. I've never seen the end. I don't even think I've ever seen the third floor. Uh, I think I got to the, th to the third floor finally, but it wasn't easy, man. Yeah. It, it took some time. So track and field, I love that. When I have parties, that, that gets a ton of play. How yeah. about here? Oh, it gets a ton of play, Oops. and it gets destroyed. It gets, it gets destroyed. The buttons, you mean? The buttons. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Really? The whole game gets rattled so much, I could actually reflow the yeah. solder on the on the monitor all the time. Because Are you kidding me? We don't have anybody inexperienced in town to play it like Hector, so right, like right. everybody just beats it to death. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you hit it so much, you get cold solder joint problems, yeah. you know? Really? So they're just, like, pounding like apes. Oh, yeah. Instead of doing... <laughs> instead of... Oh, yeah. They're and not the doing way, that. That's how I play, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, track and field's awesome. All right, so Tekken 5, is that, that's, is that a dedicated cabinet? Dedicated cabinet, yeah. That thing's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. And they're weird. I mean, you can not only, you can, uh, you can put in a card to, like, save your progress. You can also, a really odd feature, behind here are connections. You can uh, connect a PS2 controller. So you can bring your own PS2 controller into the arcade. Really? And play like you're at home. I didn't know that. Using, uh, the actual stick. Yeah, it's very, it's very cool. It's a cool cabinet. So you can plug a PlayStation controller into this. Yeah. Dude, that is cool. Has anyone ever done that? I've actually seen someone do it up at the other location. Really? Absolutely. And, and then the memory card is what? What is it? I don't know. They, 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 like, it's got a coin door where you could actually, you, back in the day, you could buy one. Oh, and then it would not give anymore. you a card. It no, doesn't I, I the card. One, yeah. Well, we've disabled it and we don't have any of the cards. So. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Now the cards don't need like an internet connection or anything, right? No, it's, no. It's, it's like all just internal. Just thing. Yeah. Maybe like you could like save your progress or bring your profile. Yeah. I, see. I was never. Uh, I was never never in on the Tekken franchise that much though. It's a cool cabinet though. 
this is this is actually one game I used to play in the '90s for money. I mean, I was really into the Tekken oh, games. You were good at that. Yeah, but once it, it became Tekken's, Tekken's weird with like animals and shit, isn't it? Like, dude, weird, there's like, like tiger, such people. strange movies. Yeah, there's like half lions and <laughs> right. stuff like that. Yeah, and there's robots that like come back to life and stuff. Oh, it's, really? It's a pretty neat game. That's cool. All right, so up here we got a step to come up. We got. Is this your Nintendo row? This is yeah. it. A little bit of a Nintendo row. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so Jordan, you got Super Mario and a DK, yep. or Popeye, whatever it was. No, no, it's just a Nintendo cap. Yeah, it's a Versus. <laughs> yeah, so, it's a Versus yeah. cap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever. It was a Popeye or a Donkey Kong, <laughs> which is fine, because you have like 25 Donkey Kongs upstairs, right? Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, the Kong off was here, so a few Donkey Kongs came through this door. One or two. Or, one and or maybe two. haven't left, too, right? They haven't one left. Two, yeah. Yeah. All right, so here's one of your one-up... Uh, Coors Donkey Kongs, which I, I do think turned out pretty cool. I think they came out good. With like the kind of watermark, it's got one up at Coors because Coors sponsored, helped yep. sponsor the event. Right. And that's like a vinyl? Did, yeah, so did they, Rich they, do that? Yeah. No, no. Uh, Coors actually sent us, Coors did the vinyl. The really? Side, yeah. On the side of the front. So John, did you put all those together? I did, yeah. All yeah. of them? All of them, yeah. All. And did they all have like 20 EZs and I mean, were they all the right joystick? No, no, dude. No? Uh, I think more, almost all of them that we got were either already converted to something else, yeah, or they were dead Donkey Kong because they were versus games. So I had to actually piece them all together. So uh, it was pretty tough, dude. I mean, but in the end, were they? Did they have like twenty Z's in them, or yeah, some I mean, of them? Or we had to make them all back original. So I put all original stuff back. In. Okay. All harnesses, yeah. power right, right, right. All the original joysticks, all you know, easy monitors, and, and all that stuff had to go back inside of it. Nice. I mean, imagine having a contest where three guys have, you know, two different vision joysticks. pros. And, yeah, yeah, and or a different a joystick. joystick. <laughs> Dude, this would be a nightmare if we would. Right, right, right. So you were buying a lot of games that were converted and converting them back. Right, and that was a decision that we made, learning from the two up and going into the. I mean, going from the Kong off two to the Kong off three, is that. We were trying to find Donkey Kongs before, but it was just as easy just to convert the ones that we were that we were just finding that were already converted to and other games. And did you end up using like repro art, like for the bezel and the control panel, or? Yeah, but we have a lot of original art too. So. Yeah, that one-up stuff. Yeah, and the we all, stuff. But we also had a lot of bezels and a lot of panels, but we made them look as nice as we could. Right, you guys can see the side art is all Kong offed with the Coors keg. Pull it out a bit. That. Yeah, why don't we? I I think the cabinet is pretty neat. So here it is, this is Kong Off 2, and it's got the one-up Coors side art, and then a special Kong Off 2 uh, side art with the Coors barrels. It says Colorado, Richie Knuckles arcade games. <laughs> we won't get into that, but uh, the Kong Off 2 instruction sticker. So is this side art, it's part of the whole thing? Yeah, like it was like just a one it's sheet all of one vinyl. piece. Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. You see what some people have done to it. Yeah. Yeah, dumped uh, coke. Everybody trying to get a piece. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Perfect. Well, you have a few Restored. more. Yeah. You got one or two. <laughs> one or two. All right, so you got a Mario Brothers. Uh, that was originally a uh, junior. Come on, John. Where's the wide body? It's at the Tua. It is? Yeah. We got a wide body. <laughs> so, Mario Brothers, I actually love the marquee though on the on the conversion you know what dude i like the wide body but if i don't have the space or if i just don't have the cabinet this is the place the same anyway no so, i know yeah so it's it's still well, awesome. with two players it's a little easier with the wide body all right junior dedicated junior there you go i've been playing some junior lately I can't, I can't break 100,000 points. That's a super tough game. By the way, I know. that's a pretty low order there, by the way. What's that? It, junior. It, people don't really play it. It's too hard of a game. And it's hard. If you want to play something, you'll play one of these three first before you play that one. Is that right? Yeah. It is tough. It is. Wait, I mean, I'm, I'm not good at it. I, by the way, I love that game. I, always, I do, I too. Loved it. I loved it for the <coughs> vision, but for some reason, I just stink at it. Wow. All right, so Tetris and a Dynamo. I actually like this game. I, I, I have Atari game. Tetris in my basement in my, yeah. in my Street Fighter cabinet. This game is fun as hell and it's like, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's such a fun game. It's cl I mean, everyone knows Tetris and I think that Atari version is the best one. It really is. Yeah. And the music on it is just amazing. Exactly. You know that? I let the music blaze over at the two-up because, I mean, the uh, track sound music because yeah. it's so awesome. 
All right, and then we have a, uh, a big blue Street Fighter Two Turbo. Is that the CPS Two? Yeah, it is. It That's is. the board I want. O Orbs is Obs or whatever is supposed to get me one of those. Obsessed. Yeah. So <laughs> this one right here it plays pretty much every version of Street Fighter in one cabinet. So when you so when you put a quarter in it, what you can do is you can play the original Street Fighter or Street Fighter Two. You just sit there and you scroll through and you pick the characters that you want to play from. What is it? It's an anniversary edition, so it plays almost all of the different Street Fighters in one game. Wait, it, it, that's a legit Capcom board? Yeah, it is. Shut up. It is, dude. Put a quarter in. I don't have one. <laughs> Jordan, coin this up. I didn't know this. What? Wait, so the anniversary edition has the anniversary all the versions on it? Everything together, yeah. It's under yeah. Get out of here. So what, you, what you do is you actually go through and you... you so he, he can be... John can be... John could be Guile from yeah. two, and then like I could be like Zangief from Turbo Hyper Fighting. You like build your player to the game, so it's pretty uh, it's pretty interesting. Not too loud. Not too loud. Yeah, All right. Oh, that's brutal. That is so loud. So right now, you're saying you could play like the turbo okay. version? Yeah. So you, you basically, you build your character. So the Ryu over there, you would first select Ryu and then you would select what game you want him to come from. I see. So then the next person would pick their character and what version of Street Fighter they wanted it to come from and then you would go head to head. And so if you pick the Ryu from Alpha 2 whatever, right. It would have that power, same power yes. meter, yep. and all those special moves. Yep. Right. Yep. <clears throat> and if I picked one from Hyper Fighting, I wouldn't have any of that. Exactly. Yep. Oh. Yeah. This version sounds kind of cool. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, that's why the board's like a four or five hundred dollar board. Set. Yeah. Because because everyone tells me you want the turbo one. Yeah. So just make sure it's Street Fighter Turbo, but it has to be the anniversary edition. Right. Yep. That's Cabinet cool. Cabinet. I love that big blue. Yeah. yeah the big blue. The speakers. That would never fit in my basement, though. That's, that's a cabinet. tough one. Monster that's cabinet. a tough one. Yeah. yeah. All right, so bust a move again in some kind of a, a Williams cabinet. Yeah, that one's actually a uh, Joust conversion there, but uh, that's kind of the way we got it. But bust a move is such a fun game. What's EX, though? Well, this is actually... So what happens is it's bust a move, bust a move again, but I just recently switched it to regular bust a move anyway. I just didn't change the marquee on it. Oh, okay. It's a Neo Geo 1 slot in there, right? That's exactly what okay. it is. Yeah. That's my wife's favorite game. I think every chick loves that game. I know. That's all she plays. If you think about all the new games coming out for like your phone, they're it's basically like that. It's something like this, yeah. yeah. So almost everybody can relate to that game, I think. Yeah. All right, so Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, is that dedicated? Dedicated. That's an original one? That's original. Yeah, I've got two of them, so. You do? Yeah. All right, dude, that is so cool. Honestly. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> It's pretty awesome. The game's kind of okay. I don't hate it. The right? press, and I mean, look, we can all laugh. Like, but the fact know. that you had the dedicated one, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm just, I, I don't think that one, that one doesn't have the side art. The the one I have at the other location has. So what's the side art? Is it like? Yeah, it's not on this one. So it's it's again, it's him. Like it's full like color. A background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, awesome. that's at the other bar. That's at the. So other we'll one. see that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, Moonwalker is cool. Do people play that? People do play it, yeah. Yeah? You know what's interesting about this particular machine? NAVL uh, oh, yeah. gave it a little whack. So if you look at the corner of it. Oh, there, really? That was in shipping? In shipping, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And you it know, was dude, so funny when he died, the boards were all like stupid money. Dude, I saw a couple of these games sell for several thousand bucks on eBay, right, like right after he died. Yeah. The prices have kind of come down a little bit, but... You know, it's it, well, basically it's a dynamo cabinet with this special coin door that has the three slots on it, and it has a special panel with the side art. So you can pretty much make these, but finding one that's original and all together is pretty tough. Yeah, and you play as like three different uh, Michael's. Michael Jackson's, yeah. red, green, and, and white. And you're saving little kids and stuff. You yeah. know, <laughs> that's the way he was saving them from what? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so uh, 1943. Great right here. I I mean I loved that game. Well, you know what's cool about this type of game, though, whether it's Raiden or 1943 or whatever it is. You gotta have a shmup. Yeah, it's basically the same game, just different graphics. Right. So anybody can go up to it and play it. You know what I mean? So that's and that cool cabinet, that's just like a generic dynamo with a 25-inch monitor? Exactly what it is. Yeah. 
And then a metal slug, that's a dynamo, right? Yeah. Is that just that one slot in there? I love like the merit control panel yeah, really. This is also, uh, <laughs> so this is actually a dynamo with a one slot Neo Geo in it. Yeah. And do you know what I do with these particular games in the back? We switch them out a lot. So yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought about getting a four slot? Or six slot? I talked about, about it. it. Just the other day. We should. Yeah, we had one at the two up, but we ended up pulling it. So. Do people know how to switch games on it? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Not man. really. Yeah. 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 That's the problem. You, you know, having multi games, people don't, don't understand the menu system. On right. Right. Whereas this, oh, it's Metal Slug. Right. Let's play it. All right. Cool. So we kind of went through the whole place. Jordan, you want to show us any little nooks and crannies, or? Uh, I mean, we've got a we've got a few nooks and crannies upstairs. We'll definitely All right, get to. Let's, so let's we'll, go check that out. We'll hit the office space. For All sure. right, you mind? No way. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Cool. Jordan, yeah. real quick, before we go upstairs, can you show me the bathroom? Absolutely. I know this is kind of weird, yeah, yeah. but I was in here earlier, and it, it's actually really cool. <laughs> hey guys, we're in the bathroom! It's like a nice art project. It is! But what fascinated me was, you have all this artwork, like arcade artwork, that has since been vandalized, yep. but it's all black and white. Yeah, and, and it was... And, so I people love get, it. People are going to write on the walls regardless. Right. Why not give them a coloring book to start with? And obviously nobody stayed in the lines, but it really came out good after about four years. And they've since taken to the ceiling. So it's a... Uh, they're on the ceiling? They're on the ceiling. How did you do this? Because it's awesome. It's, I, you know what? It's our it's our handy patrons that walk around with markers and nail polish. So. Right, but how did you make the, the wallpaper originally? Well, I had a couple of my buddies in town. Uh, I gave them the, you know, you know like the, the vector lib. Yeah, yeah. The website. And just so had I had them make it one color. I hooked them up with that and I was like, just give me a black and white, give me a black and white weed paste for the bathrooms. So each one had this, uh, this like this. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yes. <laughs> the fact that it's one color makes it way cooler too. The Tron marquee. And yeah, when we hit the other location, you guys will get to see an untouched version of it. So we got some new bathrooms. Hey guys, we're in the bathroom. I like the double dragon guys. <laughs> hey John, we're checking out the bathroom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> It is. I think it's cool as hell. This is what happens to all the games, and John, John brings it back to normal. Just <laughs> kidding, man. We get tagged all the time. <clears throat> yeah, we've had some unfortunate tagging. Like on had, the games. Yeah, we people had, like we had to pull a journey. I guess there's some new thing that the kids like to do. They like to take a razor blade and then just like etch into the glass. So if you go to like your local bathroom and you look at it now, you look in the windows. People like etch their name into the glass with like a razor blade. Oh wow! So someone took it right to the bezel on Journey, right across the front. First we grew up in. Same thing with Jungle King and Elevator Action. So we just had what to, the like, hell? We had to kill him. Dig Dug yeah. at the two ups. Like yeah, Dig Dug at the two ups like that. Really? It's a it's a it's a shame. It hasn't happened since we opened. I love the fact that we're shooting in the bathroom. It's by awesome. <laughs> 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 but yeah, vandalism. It still happens. <laughs> we should do the whole interview in here. <laughs> All right, why don't we go upstairs, go to the kitchen? Where are we going? Which you way? The, you want to get the good fella shot? Go yeah, let's do the exactly. <laughs> I want to. I want to feel like a good fella. Go through the kitchen. Cool. <laughs> All right. So this is where you. So you guys obviously make food here. Yeah. Is it just? Uh, I see buffalo sauce. Yeah. Standard wings. You got the wings, prepared burgers. yellow mustard, yeah. cheese whiz. Whiz. That comes in happy. Yeah. What, do you, what do you put the cheese whiz on? Cheese steaks, so we, we oh, the cheese whiz. steaks. Well, the whiz ain't going bad. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And that is a true cheese, Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, they use cheese whiz. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. How you doing, man? So what's the big thing? Like, what are you guys known for, like, food-wise? What do people order? Food-wise, chicken wings, for sure. Chicken wings? Great wing sauce. Obviously buffalo not, style? It's, yeah, buffalo style. Yeah. It's, it's not Ricky's. Oh, okay, yeah. It's, uh, it's really good wings. Right, <laughs> not Ricky's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go through here. Well, the off to the so upstairs like is like an office and a storage area? Upstairs, office yeah. and storage area. Yep. yep. So how long have you been here? We've been at this location four years now. Four years? Yeah. And, and uh, 
And so, like, what's your history? I mean, did you have, like, restaurants before, or bars, or yeah, arcades, or? Yeah, I had a mobile food vending business in Austin, a bar in Austin, a couple restaurants in Austin, Texas. Okay. And then I, I you know, moved down to Austin in 2005 from here. Oh, you did? So coming back to Denver was like coming home. So I see. I family and friends, and, and uh, put my brains to something that I wanted to do. And you've always been into arcade games, or? Always. I've had a game in my living room since 99, so. Which game was it? First game was Miss Pac-Man, then Mortal Kombat. Nice. Yeah. So, right, now so we're on the top is, floor, we got a service elevator. That's how is this your Jenga? Here. Yeah. We, we cut <laughs> They're two by fours. I don't know. That's it. Yeah. $19.64. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Is it pressure treated at least? No. no, no. <laughs> we, don't, we don't give them the chemicals. Just straight wood. So yeah, service elevator to get everything up here. DDR. Gotcha. So this is an elevator. Yeah. And that's how you get everything. And you got a DDR game. Yep. Are you guys gonna put that down there? We had it out there for a little bit. Really? A little bit. Yeah. People play it. Yeah. They play it. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, think about drinking, yeah. dancing, <laughs> spills. Yeah. Right. Right. Those spills are crazy. <laughs> Some <laughs> guy with a cup just. Yeah. <laughs> and wiping out. Cracking right. Right. On the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna come back here. Yeah. We'll come back to the Kong off closet. Okay. Yeah. Actually, while well, you guys go over there, I'll I'll move this stuff out of the way. Cool. Yeah. All right. We can walk through some stuff here. For sure. So. Pole position two. Pole position two. Um, Rockola project. Nice. Which what, what game are you gonna make that? It's gonna be a nibbler. A nibbler, yeah. sweet. Yep. Um, come around the corner. Two ice cold beers. I, I was asking John earlier, yeah, like. A couple ice cold beers. So this, because this is a. a pretty popular game. People like to play this. Uh, it's a pretty rare piece and it's tough to keep going with the belt. It is. On the inside. So it's, it's definitely more of like a personal collection piece than, mm. than uh, Have you tried else. it downstairs? No. You no, haven't? It's never gone downstairs. Really? Yeah. yeah. So this, this thing's kind of cool to super sub. I've never seen that like before. John's going to have to tell us about the board that's in here. So Okay. It's, uh, it's unique. There's definitely a story about the board that's in this thing. Um, this is our talent buyer's office for our music venue. So okay. we've got a Sega Turbo in here. The He's the band. booking agent? He's the booking agent. So yeah. this is the guy I was calling like 15 years ago to get a gig, yes. gig this guy. at the local bar? This guy, yeah. We're a little he bit, was just in a small room. Yeah, we're a bit more than a local bar. <laughs> What's that? We're a bit more than a local bar, so it's a full-time job. Okay. So yeah, so it's good little, little Sega Turbo. Nice. Galaxy and a couple full positions. Galaxy. Yeah. Was there a pole position downstairs? Um, no, 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 no pole position downstairs. Yeah, one of those down there. Hiding back here. This is the uh, Joust pinball. So nice. This is the first prototype Joust pinball. So if what? You notice, yeah. It's, it's, Wait a minute. This is so the you know first. So, so you know how there's four hundred and two? Yeah. One and two are the prototypes, and this is this is one. Are you this serious? Yeah. Where did you? So if you that? look at it, this is the blue. It's got a blue theme around the playfield. And if you look at anybody else's, it's black. So the really, whole black theme. So guys, this is a head-to-head -head pinball machine, yeah. right? And it's it's based on Joust, the video game, but it's a pinball machine. And so one person's on this side, one person's on the other side, yeah. and it's mega rare. Mega rare, yeah. And this, this is, is a prototype. One. Yeah, this is prototype one. Come on. Yeah, and you know what's great about this too? No, <laughs> it was the best table for working yeah, on the. This is the, this is the official machines. Kong off work table. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> all my boards were on there. All the buttons, all the wiring harnesses. <laughs> We spilled a drink on the one of these. So does this thing work? We're gonna we're gonna go. Yeah, to it works. Do you like it? I love that oh, game. Oh, absolutely. You do? Yeah. I've played it a couple of times. It's it, it's impossible with one person though, right? It's for two people. Yeah. yeah. It does actually have a one player mode though. Right. Yeah. It's pretty weird. It, yeah. Yeah. There's a journey hiding behind. Oh, here. nice. Journey two gorfs. This is the journey they carved their initials in. I see yeah. that. Yep. Was that at least a repro uh, bezel? No. It, no. Original bezel. Yeah. Original bezel. That sucks. Yeah, it sucks. So that's the journey to uh, Gorf Project, Gorf. Gorf Complete, and then you start going into, so there's a, a Kong off 3 machine, then you go to, there's a Fix-It Felix wrapped in, uh, wrapped in uh, blankets, Okay. and then you go to a couple more Donkey Kongs. <clears throat> Pleiades. This row, Pleiades. Is it Pleiades or Pleiades? Uh, according to Knuckles, it's Pleiades. Is that right? I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. <clears throat> um, Kickman's cool. Kickman, I think a scramble. Satan's Hollow. Or Satan's Hollow. Yeah. Yep. Satan's and Scramble. Hollow, scramble. Pac and Pac-Man. Yep. And then Killer Instincts. Killer Instinct 1, Killer Instinct 2. Do you like this game? I like, original Killer Instinct was awesome. Right? It was awesome. And then 2, the combo system got a little weird and really challenging. Really? And then I've since now forgotten how to play. Is that right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it was so good. So it good. seems like this is a game that I, people are talking about now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's got some life breathing. Uh, right. 
Yeah. Some breath, you know, yeah. some breath back into Did, it. Well, the, it's on Xbox One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, a little Black Tiger project. Paperboy. Oh, Paperboy. That would be a good game down the floor. Absolutely. Blitz. Terminator, Blitz, Robotron. Hubert. Hubert, Karate Man, Game. your overflow could be another arcade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Area 51. 51. Timber, dude. Come on. That's, timber. that's a great game. So it's dedicated to Timber. Um, and it's, it's in great collection. It's condition. in great it came shape. Out of, came out of Exodus Collection. Um, fantasy, fantasy with the Blur. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's next to it. Sarcastle. Yeah. Champion Rolling Thunder. And then this one's really cool. Japanese Space Invaders. Yeah, with the, with the joystick. joystick. Yeah. yeah. It's a Taito version. That's the one that I think is the one to get. Yeah. And then Aru, and then again you got the Donkey Kong. I love here. this like team molding like this. Like Sega used this too with this yeah. kind of like inset, yep. different color, you know, and like on the Tato trim lines and stuff. I, yeah. I like that a lot. It's a great machine. It's yeah. slick. Yeah. And a bunch of extra monitors, more coming up machines, and then you know there are only a few thousand. Uh, Guitar Hero Arcade today. Is that right? Yeah. John, what's the number on our, our, our Guitar Hero Arcade? 3,000. 3,000. Is that right? Yep. And then the licensing ran out. So. I'm and surprised to hear that because I've seen this a bunch of times. But usually only like bowling alleys and places like I that. I played it at a hotel. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, it's it, t it took us quite some time to find this one, actually. Really? I'd probably say two years, something like that. Wow. By the way, I have that room open now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take a peek at that. I always wondered about games like this, John. You know, like... Like 15 years from now, are, are guys going to be looking for this like they are, well, you know, a, yeah. Keep in mind, then, a Street Fighter? Keep in mind, Hero was a huge game. I know. Like, for the home and for the arcade. Right. So I think that, yes, I think the answer is going to be yes to that. Yeah. I heard that also, since they earn so well, you don't see them pop up for sale either. So this is, wow, dude. This, so this is the <laughs> Kong off in a room here. Yeah, it's the Kong this off in a room. This is it. <laughs> so there's 20 plus Donkey Kongs, all back to back, all this. Oh stores. my God, dude. There it is. Yeah, that's worse than I remember. <laughs> and a Sega it's, Turbo. It's in there, and they're, uh, they're back to back to back to back to back. They're packed in there. It's yeah. kind of sad. Huh? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's something kind of sad about it. I don't know. Yeah. I, no? Am I wrong? I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't give it much thought. Just seeing all these Donkey Kongs just kind of laying dormant in here. Did you notice that uh, red Donkey Kong side art for this one? Yeah, yeah I know. Sure. Why? Why is it red? I think all the ones that were originally red, we ended up using the red sticker on it. Oh, and I all see. The ones that were blue, we were using the blue stickers yeah. on them. And then there's actually once it, it never there's a red DK right here. Yeah, yeah. So we have a big original game. finish. Original finish, yeah. There uh, used to be uh, we made one version of orange side art, and it never got used. We we're gonna put it on Weebie's machine. Okay. And then it ne we never used it. Wow. So there's 25 Donkey Kongs. There's something in there. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, if you could see this, this is actually a pretty small space, and, it, and all I can see is Donkey Kongs. I mean, oh, yeah. that's it. I mean, it's there's it's nothing deep. else I mean, in that to, room. <laughs> if you look to the window, like right. it's pretty deep. So, like, there's a healthy amount of Donkey Kongs in here. Yeah, that's all I see. We're though, talking it's just... about it like it's like pets in a terrarium. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's on display at the. Pet so, store. what are your plans? Are these going to come out eventually? You know, we never know. What are you going to do? We're talking to Todd Tucky about throwing them off the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> So anything else up here? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we still got two more rooms to go. Two more rooms, God. It's actually kind of nice having this storage above it the uh, above the bar. The PBR pig, we got a track and uh, field Capitol pedestal, carnival. Wait, what's the PBR pig? It's not just the PBR pig. <laughs> yeah, it'll be in arcades soon. <laughs> you see the track and field? I know the four player cocktail. Yeah. yeah uh, Griffin was selling one for fifteen hundred bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. So road blasters, berserk. Road Blasters, three Berserks. Let's, let's, you, you have know, three, three Berserks? berserks. <laughs> and they all work. They, they oh, work. they do? All requested by Joel West, yeah. Three Berserks. Why, he needed three? No, he needed three, so everybody could play at the same time. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> Carnival. Carnival, Red. Zombies Revenge, another Karate Champ, Arm Wrestling. Wait, what's this Zombies Revenge? I don't think I know that game. It's a, uh, what was, it's a, I think it's a Naomi. Yeah? Naomi System, uh, Naomi 2. Is it like a, like a beat em up kind of thing? Beat -em -up. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a karate champ, an arm wrestling. I forget arm wrestling, dude. I'm kind of yeah, jealous of that. Ladder, I'll tell you what's on the back row. Wow, that and arm wrestling looks good. John will tell you, back there is a back there's come on baby. Got an asteroids, Operation Wolf, um, Captain America, 
and a, another blitz. Have you ever played that Come On Baby before? No, what's Come On Baby? It's like track and field, but your babies like racing babies. each other. <laughs> your babies? Yeah. Do they go really slow? So the faster you go, you, you, you can make them stand up on their hind leg. Come on. Yeah. Wait, is that like big round buttons? Yeah, it's a you can, so you can really beat on it. Really? Far right corner. Yeah, far right corner over there. I can't really see it. Yeah, it's called Come On Baby. Come On Baby, yeah. It's a baby track and field game? Yeah, pretty much. It's actually pretty awesome. Yeah. That's this hilarious. I want that arm wrestling. Well, put it on your list. Off. What? <laughs> Santa Claus will bring <laughs> Did arm wrestling have a, a different control scheme or that's it? It's different, well, it's, 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 there's like nothing to the control panel. I mean, but that, but that is it, that's right? It. That's it, Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mania Challenge and a Frogger. That's pleasure, for sure. Matt Mania? That, yeah, I love Matt Mania. I used to play that 7-Eleven all the time. On, I'm stuck on the match 29. I'll oh. play an hour and a half, 29. <laughs> really? And then at 29 is when it switches. It must switch from normal difficulty to difficult. Is that so right? I think I need to set like a, like a PCB to difficult and learn how to play it. So when I get to 29... Right, I you can do going. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like, you play an hour and a half. So Mania Challenge is the same as Matt Mania? No, so Mania, Mania Challenge only has four characters where Matt Mania had five. Okay. And then you actually get a belt. In, uh, well, I guess you get a belt in Mania Challenge, but it's just like a, the, the rotating of the four characters. Yeah. yeah, and you don't have you don't have Coco Beware and and, and, the, and the Piranha <laughs> guy and all that good stuff. <laughs> Definitely my guilty pleasure would be uh, Cabaret Miss Pack, Cabaret Centipede, Centipede, Two Player Gauntlet. Nice. Oh, yeah. that's kind of interesting. Yeah, Phoenix. Um, yeah, two Player Gauntlet. Not yeah, many, many, I yeah. know. Looks kind of like an that's Irish cab. It's yeah. the same captain as Rolling Thunder. Yes, that's right. There's a Guns N' Roses pin back there on its back. Um, Star, Star Wars, Wars kicks. kicks. And then in the process of building Super Punch Out, so Super Punch Out, Super Pack. Oh, sweet. D D D D2K. D2K. 11 tappers. Oh, yeah, wait, let's, let's back up one, here. Two, wait, how many how many tappers well, do you have? Total, I've got 11, but up here we've got 1, 2, <laughs> 3, 4, 5. I, mean, it's, I don't know if I can see. They kind of sprinkled around. Yeah, they're sprinkled around a little bit. Yeah. So you have eleven tap because you were. Yeah. Do you want to? Can you talk yeah, about this? Yeah, I was working with you know with the success of the Kong off. We were started to work with Budweiser to do a tapper world championship, and then uh, Bud kind of backed out. So that sucks. I got twenty grand worth of tappers and no tournament. That and was such a good idea. I know. Uh, I think there's a bubbles back there somewhere. There's, uh, a, wooden there's a wooden bubbles back there. Pango. Oh, the, yeah, Pengo from one of those uh, grocery store contests. So oh, really? If the brand, cereal brand or whatever? There's a Jungle King. Yeah. I'll tell you what's up there, actually. Give me one second. Oh, there's a Pepper, too. There's a this to do in the back, the Jungle King, Elevator Action, Bubbles, Two oh. Tappers, Pengo, a Joust 2. Oh, Joust 2? Yeah, it's over here. I've been seeing a lot of Joust 2s lately. <laughs> yeah, there's a this Little is... Pepper 2. A Repro Galaga cabinet? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do some stuff with it, but we never did. It's just been sitting here for a few years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm upstairs. Looks nice. We did. Uh, was this from DPT Wiz? It's yeah. from the local yeah. dude. Yeah. Who's yeah. So there's a guy here in Boulder that does cool. cabinets. Oh really? Yeah. Does he, he do Quantum's? He does. Cause I, I'm thinking about just getting a repro cab. I was gonna convert a Black Widow. House. Are you selling it? No. Oh. But I'll show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> So, anything else, Jordan? We oh, still yeah, have more, more to go. Oh, there's more. Yeah, we got a. Yeah, oh my uh, God. Star Trek cockpit. Nice dedicated, dedicated pack. Baby junior. Pack. Junior. Uh, junior pack. Sorry, sorry. Uh, another Robotron Moon Patrol. Lots another of control Dodge panels. DK3, Rolling Thunder, Punch Out, uh, Eight Ball Action, which is DK. Oh, isn't that that's that uh, HB's Olympics? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> Which is hunch yeah, so a lot of hunch those, bend. A lot of those control panels were, were what Kong. came from all the Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kong off well, my second Donkey Kong was the eight ball action I converted yep. back. You know. Yeah. And they also had this half bunk half hunchback Olympics, yep. which is an HB game, which is a DK mod. It's totally weird. It it's is. another track it and is. field type game, but with yep. with hunchbacks. Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> really weird. it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Another DK. <laughs> Hunchback Olympics. Hunchback Olympics. <laughs> this side art looks a little small. Huh? Yeah, actually, we were, just, we were just making fun of it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody homemade that side art. You want to know something? When I got my first Donkey Kong, from, from he had this side art on it. I wonder who made that. I wonder, yeah. And I, I complained. Wonder. I said, this stuff's too small. <laughs> <laughs> we 
the marquee on this was like a sticker too when we got. Oh really? It. Yeah. Yeah, this one was, was, was dead. Space Crystal Invaders. Castle, Space Invaders. Call it Kong off banners. Kong off banners. Yeah, there's all kinds of good stuff around here. Tempest, lots of parts, boards, necks, power supplies. Where all the magic Special crime investigation. Now that's a new marquee, right? That's not original, is it? That's original. No. Of course it is. With that car? Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's like a 2013. Uh, this game just came out. Yeah. That's a. Uh, what's that British car? Um, whatever that is. The James Bond it. car. Austin. Oh that, yeah. Is that Austin Martin? Juke, juke here. Yeah, yeah, it's a juke that I put in here when we first opened. Actually, yeah. it's been sitting there since. But that's a CD jukebox. Yeah. Is this a System One Marvel Madness kit, new in box? Uh, it was a kit actually. Yeah. But we ended up. I think we took the kit out of it and converted some game. Okay. Big pile of Nintendo boards over here. Yeah, parts boards for the Kong off. Yeah. Did Did you end up having to fix a lot of the boards for the Kong off, like all yourself? Fix all of them. Right? Yeah. All of them, and then they all had to be ROM checked. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And then when we ROM checked them all, somebody had to come in and ROM check them again. You know, because, you know, <laughs> really? Yeah. Absolutely. This room's got a arch rival, asteroids, Rally X, Tron, and then a couple dynamos. Turbo it, outrun. Is that a dedicated? Rally X? No, the outrun. The turbo. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the with the shifter, nice. Yeah. With the little turbo button. Yeah. And then that's pretty much it. Wow, Jordan. I mean, dude, you guys got a lot of stuff, and this isn't. This is. This is only one location. This is one location. <laughs> Keep in mind, man. that yeah. He has games at his place. I have games at my place. There's games at my dad's. Yeah. Right. He's, he's there's games for, everywhere. He's fighting yeah. for his garage back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the big difference. You know, yeah. there's a lot of us arcade yeah. bar owners. Yeah. That are like this. Right. And then you've got Joe Bob with a million bucks. Yeah. And our great idea. Right. Or actually, you know, people who are passionate. Termizian and Cowgill's great idea, which right. we all get to benefit from <laughs> right. which i have no problem saying all yeah the time. yeah yeah and uh yeah you know you either live it and breathe it and you can see that in the concept or you can go to some of these like the barcadia brand in dallas which right. i have no problem bashing <laughs> is uh you know it's just uh you can see when like there's games out marquees out yeah there's no soul there's no, there's soul no it, yeah you know there's when no you, heart in it when it's you, just when you've got your arcade bar connected to your sushi restaurant in new right. orleans Come on, let's yeah, be yeah. honest here. Right, right. You know, now, I'm okay. sure there's definitely some of that where these guys just, oh, I heard this is a trend, let's yeah. do it. Yep. No different than a tanning salon or yeah. whatever, you know? <laughs> yep, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you got to live it and breathe it. And yeah. You can, you can see that. And yeah, and I could definitely in. tell, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, you're all in. <laughs> this yeah. is this is you, Jordan. This is you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, you know what? I think that's going to do it for this little trip here to 1UP. And we'll, we'll go to the other places and all that, so... All right, guys, let's go back to the basement. Lodo in Denver, Colorado. What did you guys think of that place? Pretty awesome, right? Lots of great classics. I have to tell you, I had a lot of fun when we went upstairs in that little storage area. And Jordan is a great host, awesome guy. So if you guys are ever in Denver, Colorado, be sure to check it out. Actually, I want to tell you guys something kind of funny. Um, when I arrived at 1UP, uh, uh, we went up to the office and they're like, hey, you got mail. I'm like, what? <laughs> there was a package there waiting for me. There was a package addressed to me at the one up and uh, I'm like, okay, so I opened it up and inside of it were these cups. There was some cups and some tokens, right? And I'm like, what is going on here? And uh, I was confused. 
<laughs> so, so I read the letter, and it, it was from a, a, a viewer of the John's Arcade channel. It says, John, here are the cups and tokens I picked up from Cactus Jacks down in Oklahoma City for you. So I guess Cactus Jacks is an arcade in Oklahoma City. He says, I saw your latest video and sure wish I could bring them myself to Denver since it's not that far away from Wichita. But I work weekends and there's no way I can make it on such short notice. I know it's not much compared to some of those European care packages you've received lately. Lately. I didn't intend for it to be one of those unboxings on your channel. Well, I'm, I'm gonna share it anyway. I was just thinking of your home arcade while I was there, and it seemed like something you may have grabbed for yourself if you had visited that place. Well, dude, thank you. These are actually really cool. I'm gonna put these in the arcade. I'll use them to hold uh, darts and, and quarters and stuff. Um, he said, I think switching to tokens or yen coins would be a cool thing to do for guests to your arcade. That way they would have to coin up like in the 80s. I know, I've thought about this so much. You could get John's arcade cups and custom tokens printed up for them to haul their tokens around in. That place is great. If you could ever make a trip to Oklahoma City to visit and film it, I would be more than happy to meet you down there. Keep up the great work on your channel. Uh, Sign Tony. P.S. I emailed the one upload to corporate and and uh, so Craig said it was okay to send these here. So yeah, dude, so thanks for the cups. Uh, thanks for the tokens. I've never heard of Cactus Jacks, but if I happen to ever be in Oklahoma City, I will be sure to check it out. Um, looks like a cool place, dude. So if you guys are in the area, stop by Cactus Jacks. And uh, you know, I get a lot of emails now, people wanting me to go to different arcades. And uh, little by little, maybe I will get to go everywhere. <laughs> I mean, certainly when I travel, I, I'm going to be stopping as many arcades as I can. These tokens are actually pretty cool. So, Tony, thank you for this. It was actually kind of uh, flattering to have a to show up and have mail at at the one up. That was kind of cool. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, I, I like to do some viewer mails uh, at the end here. And by the way, I'm, I'm sorry that this video was late. Uh, I was traveling. I didn't get home till Sunday evening, and I just didn't have it in me to edit the video when I got back. I really wanted to just kind of just go to bed because it was a long day of traveling. I had a layover in, in Chicago. Ugh. I really am sick of traveling, I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm sick of airports. I, I, I become a guy that really likes to be home. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather be in this house than anywhere else, really. But it is nice to get out. So uh, thanks again to John and Jordan for, for having me in, in Denver. It was awesome. And, and there's going to be more Denver videos, guys. Um, I'm probably going to space them out. I don't want to do Denver, 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 because we got to get back to work down here. Um, I, I got the parts for the wrench from Mars, so we got to do that. Um, I got the resistor for 720. I want to do that. So we got to get some stuff fixed down here. So I, I might do every other video of Denver one till we're all done because I, I think I have four Denver videos that we're going to do, and they're pretty good, actually. Uh, one of them I really liked. We went to this retailer, and uh, they've been in business forever. And in the back, they had this massive warehouse, and it was like... Are you freaking kidding me? So that's going to be a good video. So I don't know if we'll do that one next. And then we'll go to two up. And then we want, uh, there's this collector uh, uh, woman, Zyla, there who has an arcade called Hyperspace. So I did a video there too. So I, I did a lot of stuff, met a lot of guys. So thanks to everyone that came out again. Um, there were some kids that came, by the way, which kind of blew my mind. There, there was a, a, young, a young guy. I, I don't really know how old he is, maybe 10 or 12. And his dad... Uh, he had his dad bring him to the arc to the uh, one up so he could meet me and his dad had no idea who I was didn't know anything about my YouTube channel but his son really wanted to go to meet me and I, I kind of blew my mind so so thanks to everyone that showed up because that was that was just awesome man uh, anyway let's do some viewer mails and by the way if you guys like this segment you got to send them you got to email them to me blk dog the number seven at gmail.com blackdog7 blk dog7 at gmail.com in the subject line please please put viewer mail so I can find these all right the first one's from Scott Roy uh, hey, John, big fan of your channel. I discovered your channel about a year ago and have been watching most of the videos as they are released. I have always wanted to own or build a cabinet, but really haven't had the time or money. Thank you for all that I have learned. I have decided after watching you that restoration is the way I want to go. Someday I'll be able to purchase my own. However, in the meantime, I'm gaining knowledge and experience with each video. I actually like it 
I think it's kind of cool that people that don't own any of these games watch the videos. I think there's a lot of guys out there uh, that don't have anything. He says, thanks, buddy. Also, I love the on-the-road vids. I enjoyed your recent video uh, from the Pinball Wizard in New Hampshire. I live not far from there and have been there several times. I really like that video, too. I know I mentioned it in this video a couple times. That place did make a pretty big impression on me. I, I thought that's a great place. Uh, just so many pins, man. And lots of good vids, too. Just a great arcade. Uh, it was cool to see it from your perspective. Next, next time you come up here, you should stop in Nashua, New Hampshire. There is a place called Fun World, okay? Not many classics, but they do have a lot of newer games from the 90s and the in the thousand in the 2000s, as well as extremely rare Galaxian 6 player theater. This thing is massive, something you don't see often, that's for sure, let alone still working. Anyway, thanks again for all that you do with the videos and the podcasting. PS my son loves drafts playground. Scott well, Scott, thanks. I'm glad your kid likes my app. And by the way, if you guys don't know this, uh, we, me and Matt McCarthy, we have a company called Tomato Interactive. We, we make apps. And we, we have a line of preschool apps uh, that are branded Giraffes. And our big app is called Giraffes Preschool Playground. Giraffes Preschool Playground. I am actually the voice of the giraffe. <laughs> so uh, the app is on, on, on iPhone, iPad, Android, Kindle, uh, Nook. Uh, the Mac, it's on everything. It's called Giraffe Preschool Playground. Check it out. If you guys want to hear me as a talking giraffe, <laughs> then grab the app. Uh, anyway, all right, let's go back to this. Okay, you are the second person now to request that I go to Fun World, okay? Uh, I think it was uh, Bruno in the Netherlands who, is that who it is? Uh, Darth Nuno, Bruno? Uh, he's the guy that runs the Dragon's Lair fans forums in, in Europe. And I think he has a Galaxian 6. I I'm sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. I, I get you guys sometimes confused. I'm sorry. But he has a Galaxian 6 player theater. He has one, I think. And he, want, he was wondering if I would go there too to film this Galaxian six-player theater. And you know what, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go there, okay? I, I hope that they still have that big Galaxian. Now the Galaxian six is a, it is literally a theater. It's a game that you get inside and it's a projector gun game. I, I don't know if it's on rails or something. I've seen video footage of it, but this is doable. I can take a ride up to New Hampshire and we could do this. I, I, I'd I like to do that. So I don't know when. I don't know if it's going to be in the next couple months, but I, it's on my list right now. We're going to go to Fun World. Maybe I could stop there on the way up to Fun Spot one time, but I would like to check out this Fun World because you're not the first one to say that. So Scott, I will. I will. We're going to do that. I don't know when, but we'll do it. Uh, next one is from Rick. John, phenomenal channel. I watch very often during lunch at work. I've always said to myself, man, this guy should have a TV show. Thanks. <laughs> I love the builds and a great idea on the viewer mail segment. It forms a tighter relationship with your viewers. I do have some consumptions about power consumption these machines use. I know you've mentioned you don't have them on 24-7, but can you give us an average cost of your electric bill? I mean, how much do these machines add to your bill under normal use? Lastly, how much power does the average machine use? Enrique, I don't... My electric bill, man, what what is what's the average electric bill? I don't know, 100 bucks or something? What is it? I mean, I mean these games truly aren't on 24 hours a day. I mean, they, they might be on uh, lately 4 or 5 hours a week, 6 hours maybe. So, I if I had to guess, I maybe it's adding 20 bucks to my electric bill, maybe? I don't know. Uh, you know, how much does each game I mean, if you think about it, it's it's like turning on 30 television sets. <laughs> so, I don't know. And you know, how much power does average machine use? I mean, I know they draw like you know, like one, one and a half amps, somewhere between one and two amps each one draws. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, this question comes up a lot about the about the electric bill, and and honestly, my electric bill I think is pretty normal. Uh, I mean, my electric bill goes up when I turn the air conditioning on. It doesn't really go up when I turn the arcade on because it's not on that much. Um, I turn it on on Fridays. I turn it on when I do videos. Like right now, I, I'm doing the, the intro and the closing for this video. The arcade will be on for about a half hour, and then it's off, okay? And the next time I turn it on, it might be Friday or the uh, next video. So uh, it, it's, it's on three to four times a week. 
you know, maybe a half hour, an hour at a time, sometimes a little longer on the weekends, maybe a few hours on the weekends uh, when I'm really down here. And Friday night, I usually come and play. Uh, so I don't know about these electric, uh, electric bill questions. I, 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 I don't really have a definitive answer. Uh, this one's next one is from Al Ali uh, Adenzada. I think he was from Iran. He, he wrote in before. Hi, John. Why not get started on fixing your jump bug and your revenge from Mars at the same time, okay? Another question. Why did you sell your time pilot, your punch out, your move patrol? I thought you liked those games. You, you had a big time pilot restore. Time pilot restore. Why did you get rid of it? You know, Ali, it's just the way it goes down here, man. I, I just, uh, I try to keep it fresh, you know, and uh, I, I don't, I don't want to stop, okay? I don't want to stop collecting. I don't want to stop working on these games. I don't want to stop restoring. I don't want to stop looking for the games. And so that means that I got to get rid of stuff because otherwise I have to stop, okay? If I just said no more games, well then the, the part of the hobby I like the most, which is the chase, the thrill of seeking out the games, uh, you know, trying to find the deal, the bargain, uh, being in the garage, fixing things, restoring things, painting, bondo, electrical work, fixing monitors, all of that would stop, okay? So I have to get rid of stuff so I can keep doing the part I enjoy the most, which is the thrill and the restoring. I mean, of course, I like playing the games, but once a game gets down here, after a year, Maybe sometimes after six months or three months, maybe it starts feeling, it falls a little flat for me, or I, I, I realize I'm not playing it, you know? Like, okay, so let's go through your list. So, the Time Pilot. Okay, I love Time Pilot. Without a doubt, it is a classic, okay? It is, it's a game I fondly remember as a kid. I did a restore on it. I love Time Pilot, okay? But I just, I, it got to a point where I had to get rid of something, and I'm looking at the Time Pilot, and I'm like, well, and it was in that corner back there, okay? And I, and I pick up, I picked up the Star Wars, and I'm like, well, the Star Wars should be in that corner. I, I don't, I, th I think I got the t Star Wars at I don't remember, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. So I got the Star Wars, and something had to go, and I, I just kind of went down the list, and I'm like, well, what, what do you like the least right now? And at the time, it was Time Pilot. Do I hate Time Pilot? Absolutely not. I totally respect that game. That's a great freaking game, but it had to go. So do I miss it? Nah, I like playing the game. I don't crave it though. Uh, Punch Out. Okay, that's a game that I kind of regret getting rid of a little bit. Punch Out is probably a game that I would have kept if I had more room or endless room. It's a game I could have maybe put into storage, but at the end of the day, I just wasn't playing Punch Out. Now, I had Punch Out down here for a few years. I did play it a lot in the beginning. I'll tell you this, I sucked at it. I just wasn't good. I never got good at Punch Out. I kept playing it and playing it and playing it. I could get to like pizza pasta or something, and I just couldn't get any further, and it was starting to frustrate me. And so I just stopped playing it, and it sat there idle, and, and, and I, it wasn't getting the love. And so my buddy Jay was interested in it. He turned it into a super Punch-Out, and actually I think he's sold that now. So Punch-Out is a great game. It, it didn't have the staying power. Same thing with Moon Patrol. Moon Patrol is another game I freaking loved. I mean, like, oh my god, Moon Patrol was a game that I was incredibly in love with as a kid. I think I played that on my Atari 800XL. I played that somewhere at home on a console or computer. But Moon Patrol was a game that I truly loved, and I still love it. I still like that game. But again, it was one that I just kind of slowly didn't play. Um, I played it a ton when I got it. I kept, I played it a lot, actually, you know, for months, for a year, for two years. And eventually, I just wasn't playing it, so I got rid of it. And also, at that time, I think I sold the Moon Patrol when I was going to Disney, and that helped pay for that vacation which was a little bit of motivation too. So, you know, it, it, I've said this before, there's a kind of a cycle of life down here. And again, I kind of have to just get rid of stuff so I can enjoy new stuff, so I can go after new stuff, so I can work on new stuff. So let the next guy enjoy it, you know? So that's kind of what happens, Ali. I, I know it's hard to understand, but I just, I have a finite amount of space. And uh, so stuff just has to go. 
Uh, Overcast 78. John, I love your show. My name is James Reb from Upper Kensington, California in the Bay Area. And I've only recently gotten in the hobby of repairing arcade and pinball games as well as restoring them within the last year. My favorite John's arcade shows are your on the road variety. Thanks. Well, this is, you're going to get a bunch of them in the next few weeks. Uh, my question is, will we see you take a few trips to Northern California this year with two great Northern California shows coming up with Pinagogo in May in Dixon? In, and California Extreme in Santa Clara in July. I can't think of two better on the road specials. Both are huge shows and top notch as far as this hobby goes. I hope you find a baby Pac Man soon. I was able to snag a great one right before the new year with my interest coming from your videos. James Reb, Umper, Kensington, California. All right, James. You know, California Extreme is something I need to go to. I, 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 I know, and, and I'm gonna try to go this year. It's, it is a tough time of the year. July is hard for me, man. You know, because this summer, it's tough for me to just kind of sneak away and do John's Arcade stuff. So we'll see, because that's that's kind of family time, man. Vacations and birthdays and all that stuff. So I, I would like to go to California Extreme. I really wanted to go this year, and who knows, maybe I will go. Um, I, I will try to do that this year, because I truly want to experience California Extreme. It really seems like a great time. And maybe if I do go, we can kind of schedule a little meetup or something. I think it could be a lot of fun. But I'm going to make a, 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 a... I actually have miles I think I could use for that for that flight. So, yes, I'm going to try to go to California Extreme this year. That is the plan. I'm, I'm going to try. Maybe I can meet up with Joe from Arcane Outsiders. And I don't know. I, I think Sean maybe may or may not go this year. So we will try to get to California Extreme. I've never heard of Pinagogo, to be honest. Uh, sounds fun, though, in, in, in Dixon, California. I don't think I've really been... I, I haven't been anywhere, I think, in Northern California. I've only been, like, in the southern region of California. I don't think I've ever gone to San Fran or anything up there. So it'd be kind of fun to just experience that part of the country, too. Uh, hi, John. I love your tech and gameplay vids, but have a... This is from Rob Flynn, by the way. Hi, I love your, uh, your tech and gameplay videos, but have a very quick arcade accessory question. I see in your Donkey Kong High Score Temp vids the stool that you are sitting on. I have seen the exact or very similar one on eBay. Where did you get yours, and how do you like them? I'm curious about how sturdy they are. Keep up the great work, Rob... Flynn's MCP on Claw from Lockport, New York. Okay, Rob, let me show you. So, this stool, I got this stool uh, around Christmas time. I actually ordered this stool when I was in uh, Chicago during Thanksgiving. And it was around that Black Friday time. And I got it on Amazon, okay? I, I'm, I'm not positive on this, but I think that this stool is like 150 maybe even $200 on Amazon, okay? Now, Amazon had one of those lightning deals or whatever when I was, because I, when I was, during Thanksgiving, I'm at my parents' house and I'm just kind of bored and I'm on the laptop just, just checking Amazon just because they're having all those crazy lightning deals and Black Friday stuff and it was like Black Friday week and I just kept checking on that site and this stool popped up and it was $50, okay, shipped. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, man, that, that stool is kind of badass. <laughs> and and so I bought it. It was $50 shipped. I think it was normally $150 or, or maybe even a little bit more. And I kind of thought it looked cool, and it, show, it showed up when I got back from Chicago. And I put it together, and, and it is by far my favorite stool now. And is it sturdy? Hell yeah, man. Is it comfortable? Absolutely, man. This stool freaking rocks. And what's cool about it too is it has like a little pump thing on the side so you can adjust the height. You know, it's got one of these things here. So you can, you can pull this up and it goes up and down and you can get all the different heights. So it's good for like the Neo Geo or the Bark or, or the uh, the Mega Touch, which is at a bar table. So you can adjust the height. Uh, it's super cozy. It's really stable. Yes, I would recommend that stool. I, I, I actually love it. it. It is my favorite stool. It's the one I'm using now whenever I play games. And it's it's comfy, man. It's it's totally like soft. It's it's someone in the one video said it was like a couch. It was like a couch chair. <laughs> it kind of is. So yeah, that stool rocks. I don't know what it's called. I don't know anything about it. I mean, I could try to go to my Amazon history and, and get the get the link to it. But uh, yeah, good stool. I definitely recommend it. Um, 
So yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, by the way, I do release new videos on Sundays. Uh, my microphone just fell off. On Sundays and sometimes in between. I'm all tangled up here, guys. Hang on. Uh, uh, this is my Sunday video. It's late because I, I got home yesterday evening. Uh, but we're going to be on track the next few weeks, the foreseeable future here. I got a lot of stuff going on, guys. We got all these on-the-road vids I got to get out. I want to do more of the John's Quest 4 videos. Donkey Kong Jr. has made me mad officially. I'm on a mission now to at least get through all the levels. So the next video, I'm actually, I think I might actually practice a little bit without you guys. Because I, I actually am, am uh, at a point with Donkey Kong Jr. right now where I don't remember how I used to play it. Like Donkey Kong, that gameplay style is just engraved in my head. Junior, I, I, I took such a break from it that I forgot how to play it. So we're gonna get back to those Let's Play videos. Uh, we're definitely gonna be doing some more repair stuff because we gotta, do Revenge from Mars part number two. I got those parts. I feel pretty confident that I have a, a better grasp on what's going on there. So we might do that next um, after this video. And then of course the 720, we gotta fix that monitor. It, we just gotta fix it because I, I, I can't have that game down. And then the Tempest, is fixed. It's it's not even doing it. There's no more claps. So, anyway, if you guys have never subscribed to my channel, now is a great time. Go ahead and click subscribe. I release new videos Sundays, sometimes in between. Uh, another reminder: I am in that Edge magazine issue. The Edge magazine that is this month. It's uh, episode. Uh, it's issue two seventy six, uh, which is um, well, it's uh. It's got Uncharted on the cover, and this is a, what the spread looks like. So they did a write-up on a bunch of arcade collectors, and I am in it. I have a two-page spread. How cool is that? So if you guys are in the UK, that ma I actually have found out that Edge Magazine is sold at Barnes & Noble uh, in the US, but this issue that I'm in, uh, 276, with Uncharted on the cover, will be in the Barnes & Noble stores around February 5th because this is a UK magazine. So it's out in the UK now. It came out like January 15th and then there's a little bit of a delay uh, before Barnes & Noble in the US gets that inventory and gets it in, on their store shelves. So look for the issue that I'm in in the US February 5th-ish at Barnes & Noble or if you're in the UK or in Europe, you can get the Edge magazine now and, and there's a nice little write-up about me. And I, I'm just stoked by this. I, honestly, I, I'm besides myself that I'm in a magazine. And it's a good magazine. I'm not just in any crappy magazine. Edge is a very well-written magazine. Now, now, this is not the issue I'm in. This is just an example of one. Because I actually do read this magazine. This was a great issue, too, with me and Moto. I mean, really awesome, well-written, lengthy, long-form articles, which you don't see these days because everything is all fluff, it seems. Um, but anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, podcasts, you know, uh, I do Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com and Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. If you've never subscribed to those podcasts or you've never listened, check them out, VideoGameOutsiders.com and ArcadeOutsiders.com. And of course, we do those live at AllGames.com starting on uh, at 9 p.m. on Tuesdays, uh, that's Eastern Time, every single week. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later, and bye!